uh, innovative solutions. And of course, uh, reinforcing international networks. Uh, today, in, in these three days, our attention is uh, uh, devoted to, to this aspect uh, in, in, in a view of a better uh, uh, coll uh, collaboration. And uh, thanks also to the colleagues of the PIT, PIT network. Uh, next slide, please. Um, our uh, role is also to uh, collect the needs of our members, in particular our um, enterprises, our companies. And for example, talking about crop production, uh, a particular attention is devoted to uh, pest control. Um, against uh, a number of adversities and in particular in this uh, difficult period uh, that can cause uh, devastating effects due to climate change. Also traceability is very important. Uh, we need to invest uh, a lot in uh, digitalization along the whole uh, value chains and uh, in, in order to uh, promote uh, uh, more and more precision agriculture. Accessibility is another uh, important keyword. Um, I mean accessibility of innovation for the enterprises. And uh, this uh, uh, day is also um, addressed to this uh, important issue. And of course, the consumers. So um, we need to um, invest also in uh, in the communication to the consumers uh, in, in order to communicate the, um, su the, the sustainability of the processes uh, of food production and uh, um, to improve the perception of the consumers. The next, please. And of course, demo farms are in, in the center of this uh, discussion. Uh, First of all, knowledge development, the, the importance of sharing knowledge uh, in, in, uh, in these kind of networks for the uh, uh, generating a good impacts for the enterprises and for the businesses. Uh, of course, testing is uh, one uh, important aspect um, of the matter to provide the, practical solutions for the farmers, for their day-to-day -day management of their activities. Uh, of course, uh, varietal innovation. Tomorrow we will have an important focus on this aspect during uh, one of our live uh, connections with uh, CRPV and CAV. And uh, in general, it is important to invest in quality of plants and the fruits and vegetables. Uh, so investing also in certification programs uh, and, and uh, in an activity of uh, propagation of uh, uh, quality materials. The next, please. So uh, in, in a few seconds, I would like to show you uh, some of our regional uh, demo farms uh, with a specific uh, experience in crop productions, uh, for example, from left to right, uh, Piacenza University specialized in precision viticulture, uh, Sica Parma uh, also uh, involved uh, in, in this uh, event for uh, uh, food preservation uh, and in particular for uh, uh, for example, reproducing industrial production cycles and with a specific focus on industrial tomato. Uh, steward in Parma about organic farming. Um, some of them are public, some of them are private. So uh, uh, this is a, um, a summary of both uh, options. Uh, continue with uh, um, Bologna University and CRPV. Uh, in this slide, we um, briefly give you um, an overview about an important activity that we are managing together with Tuscany Region. And thanks to our colleagues of Tuscany Region for this uh, uh, role of uh, leading this uh, working group of uh, interregional clusters for the in, uh, development of uh, 
the concepts of demo farms, sharing skills and projects, and uh, providing um, options and solutions for the enterprises. Uh, the next uh, slide and uh, the final slide about our expectations. So to reinforce networking, of course, uh, and the facilitation, the, uh, the share uh, and uh, the, of uh, innovative solutions, uh, creating also new value chains uh, at the cross-sectorial level, uh, developing new investments involving companies at the international level and uh, uh, promoting new partnerships and, and new uh, joint ventures. Um, uh, of course, making innovation more accessible. This is a, a key word uh, that is very important for us. And also promoting, for example, demo farm tours. Uh, we are thinking about it together with Tuscany region um, in order to strengthen knowledge uh, for uh, te technicians, for uh, enterprises, but also for uh, uh, students and citizens. Um, so uh, thank you very much and very glad and honored to be here with you. And uh, at this point, uh, I give the floor to uh, the colleague Nicolas Fejean uh, um, about uh, the uh, PIC network, uh, Nicolas Fejean of uh, the <laughs> Thanks, Thanks, Hope that you are seeing well my, my, my screen, I guess, yes. Uh, thanks, Marco. Thanks, Celia. Thanks, Arnoldo, Stefania, and I, all the team of the organizer of this uh, event. Uh, on my side, I'm very glad to, to open as well this event. As you see, I'm the only non-Italian for this opening, but it's again to remind you that it's a European event. Italia will be the, and Tuscany and Emilia Romagna will be the two regions inspiring us uh, during the, the week, but uh, we want to share also other European vision, and that would be also all the purpose of this uh, of such event uh, to mix the, the view and to cross our vision on on this demo farm on these topics of uh, that uh, Celia will present just after. So uh, I'm from uh, France, from VG Police Valley, which is the one of the the French partner of, of the peak. I will present all the cluster now, but uh, for VG Police, we are leading. Uh, this uh, alliance of cluster in Europe for plants. So, again, um, thanks to all the participants of that we will have time to network during the week and who we are as the peak. Uh, the peak plant inter cluster network, of course, we are clusters, all working in plant industry and plant innovation. We saw in Europe a lot of agri food uh, clusters, a lot of them are more food than agri, and we wanted to to have a common vision with the people working in agriculture and uh, in, uh, in this kind of in plant issue and horticulture in the in, in majority of us. So that's why we create this uh, alliance of cluster 10 years ago or even more. And uh, the key point is uh, production, ICT for uh, plant industry, horticulture, food and equipment uh, for agriculture. You see here in the map um, the 12th um, partners who sign an agreement on it. There is no uh, status or official status for, for the PIC, but if you are considering us as partners for European project, if you reach one of us, you can have directly the, the, the full uh, network and that would be very great for dissemination, for example. So in the agreement, you see that we have a, a, a South Europe representation very clearly with uh, three French, three Spanish, one Portuguese, uh, Marco and Celia for a cluster agri-food. And um, then uh, Greenport and historic uh, partners as well, food and bio cluster from Denmark, Unimos Alliance and uh, agro bio cluster in particularly in Poland, and Andragropol cluster from Romania. Um, that's more or less the main characteristic and where we are and who we are. We, you can go uh, on ECCP page and we are updating the data here. And of course, this uh, peak is open to other clusters in Europe who would like to, to be uh, close to us. What we do, um, of course, this event is the annual event. We do it normally physically, but uh, with this uh, COVID situation, we do it virtually and that brings us the opportunity to be 
maybe more connected this morning, uh, this, uh, this afternoon. But we, what we want is learn and exchange as cluster, uh, having the best practices, working group on thematics, collaborate and innovate. You see here the main key point that we will talk also along the, the, um, the days of, of the event, Green Deal or Horizon Europe, uh, all the interclustering project as well, and the network. So, and thematic webinars as we did uh, at the beginning of the year about organic farming or uh, vertical farming on this kind of subject. So that will be all for me. I will let again uh, Celia take, to, take uh, um, the mic and present the agenda and be on time for the first conference. Thanks a lot and enjoy your peak meeting. Thank you, Nicolas. So um, here I am again. So this time I will introduce myself properly. I'm Celia Gavo. I work with the uh, cluster Agri-Food in Emilia-Romagna in Italy, where the uh, organizer, co-organizer this year of the PIC21 with our co colleagues of the Tuscany region. So um, quick overview of the agenda. It's um, an event over three half days. Quite a busy agenda, I must say. So uh, I think you will be uh, pleased by the uh, very rich content of uh, talks that we have planned for you. Today, we're the first afternoon. We are going to be focusing specifically on bio-based products and processes for plant cultivation. With first, uh, in a few moments, the uh, conference, which will be opened by uh, Professor Enrico Francia uh, as a keynote and moderator, which will focus on the early stages of plant growth. And then after a short break, but we stay in the same room, we will move to the field visits, uh, which will be focusing on the post-harvest stages. But the whole afternoon will be around this concept of bio-based innovation. And we will always try to have a, a, a concept or a perspective uh, to demo farming and demo sites as uh, Marco Foschini just presented. So a very busy afternoon of uh, speakers and, and discussions with the Italian perspectives on, on a lot of these topics and then some uh, non-Italian perspectives uh, from Denmark or from uh, France, for example. Tomorrow, um, we will be meeting in the morning this time. So we will focus on another topic. So it will be specifically looking at high tech, zero carbon footprint, horticulture and fruiticulture. So we'll start again with a conference uh, by um, opened by our keynote speaker, Professor Francesco Ferrini of Florence University. For one hour, uh, we will have a, a, a conference involving also a, a Dutch uh, presenter from Wageningen University. And then we will move again to the field visits with two specific field visits in Italy, in Emilia Romagna and Tuscany. And we will close for the morning. And in the afternoon, there will be the B2B sessions. Uh, there, there are a lot of B2B uh, meetings already booked. Don't hesitate to book some more or book meetings with uh, some of our speakers as well. Then on the third day, we will have a day that is a bit different. It will be specifically dedicated to policymakers and cluster managers and cluster staff. We will be discussing with a number of experts uh, opportunities for clusters, for cluster managers and cluster staff and the cluster members to be involved in the new generation of European uh, opportunities for research and innovation funding. So there will be presentations by people from the Commission, from European DIH, from the uh, big um, bio-based industry consortium, and there will be discussions with uh, the uh, PIC partners, the PIC members, uh, the clusters belonging to the plant intercluster. Um, we will be closing officially the event on the Friday around lunchtime. And in the afternoon, we will have a, a second and last B2B moment from two o'clock to four o'clock. Again, so that you can meet with uh, partners from, as Marcus said, 35 countries from all around the world. We've got people coming from the EU and well beyond. I think there are many Chilean and Brazilian uh, participants. So that's fantastic. Have a look at the participants list. Make sure you book meetings with people that you think you could have a good strategic relationship with. So, um, you know, out of the 228 participants, I'm sure you'll find uh, someone of interest. So the idea now is that you enjoy this event, that you um, connect with um, the right people. And uh, I will leave the floor now to the first uh, keynote speaker of this afternoon for our first conference, Enrico Francia of the University of Modena and Reggio Emilia. Enrico, the floor is yours to take us through this first conference on bio-based products and processes for plant cultivation with a focus on early stages of plant growth. 
So thank you very much, very much, Celia, for this introduction. And uh, welcome everybody again, also from my side, uh, for this first conference that we have in this afternoon uh, that is entitled Bio-Based Products and Processes for Plant Cultivation. So we will have a focus on the early stage of plant growth because as you know, uh, every value chain in the agri-food sector has the two main pillars that are the plant crop production in the field and then transformation from the agri-food industry sector. So in this first part, we will have a scientific focus, especially on crop and plant applied research on crop and plant growth in the field. So let me start my presentation. Okay. You've got a, a wonderful uh, background uh, soundtrack, Enrico. <laughs> it's beautiful. <laughs> ah, yes. <laughs> Directly from the field, yes. <laughs> okay. Can you see my presentation, Celia? Yes, we can. Okay. Thank you again. So, I am a professor at the University of Modena and Reggio Emilia. I am a professor of agronomy. And uh, I wanted to start this uh, this scientific section, section yes, um, with this title. So, are bio-based innovation two sides of the same coin for the farming sector? Uh, probably, as you can imagine, the, the answer is yes. And I want to introduce you to um, some of the specificity of these regions that are Emilia-Romagna, the, the northern one, and Tuscany, that is this one, southern. They are divided by the Apennini mountains, but Emilia-Romagna is half of the region is typically in the Po Valley, and also Tuscany, you probably know very well how wonderful is the, the, the Tuscany uh, countryside. But if we look at agriculture and production, if we take into consideration, the, if, we, if we start with the point of view of, the, of a farm, we can see a typical crop rotation, that is winter cereals, followed by maize or sorghum that, has, that are uh, summer cereals, and then processing tomato that will be used uh, in this afternoon as a typical example of a value chain in our context. So if you see at the table that is presenting the harvested area in thousands of hectares, Emilia-Romagna and Tuscany uh, contributes uh, more or less 16% of the harvested area of winter cereal as well as maize and sorghum. And 37% of the processing tomato harvested area in our country. So um, this is a very important uh, starting point for me um, because we can use for example tomato and we will see in the other presentations that we can uh, use these crops as a contributors uh, of our new view of the bio-based innovations in the farming sector. So um, an equal typical question in this context is how to produce more with less. In other words, is there a possible way for sustainable intensification in our European context of our advanced agriculture sector? So a really fundamental but often forgotten concept is this one. Probably is quite complex for some of you, but uh, I will explain very briefly this equation, it seems to be a complicated equation. It is not because yield, biomass production in the field is a combination. Let's say it is an interaction between three major components that are environment that can be quantified, for example, from an energy point of view, from the quantity of 
light energy that is coming from the sun that interacts with the genotypes that we cultivate, that we, sow, that we select, sow and manage in the field. And then the management, that is the, the agronomy, agronomic contribution to the cultivation. And if it is true that the environmental changes are pushing us to improve, to boost this interaction, it is also true that we are called to find one or more solutions to this challenge through the innovation, particularly on the genotypes and on the management. So I will use the tomato, processing tomato as an example, because as you know, Italy ranks second in the world as a global producer of processing tomato. That means tomato cultivated in open field. Um, also, if you look at the pie chart, it's quite difficult, sorry, to, to read inside it. But if you look at this section, you have roughly 60% of the uh, quantity produced worldwide are accounted, is accounted by California, Italy, China, Spain. So in our country, processing tomato, the processing tomato supply chain, value chain, agri-food value chain, is organized in two large districts, one in the north and one in the south of the, of the country, with very similar production quantities. And you can see that they are represented by a sort of consortium that is the interprofessional organization Pomodoro Nord Italia in our context, in our region. So as, as I said before, we must therefore improve the resilience of the crops. In particular, for this summer cropped tomato, the resilience is strategic because we have a continental climate so the the, the cropping season is um, is challenged by this climate change so we can see you can see here the 30 years average of the minimum and maximum summer temperature minimum on the left and the summer maximum temperature on the right and you can see that we have an increase a tendency of global warming from the observation of the last 30 years. So what we can do is to test varieties and uh, improve them from a genetic point of view and to better cultivate them from the agronomic point of view. One of the traits that we were interested in is the early chilling tolerance so you can do varietal testing you can test your varieties both in controlled and in field conditions you can put together this testing with crop modeling for example and you can also put together precision agriculture we will see an interesting example later on on this and um, these are tools that we have available to improve this interaction that I show you before. So these are essential tools to discover and also to exploit the genetic potential of the species. You can see, you can study them from different point of view, from the physiological point of view, from the morphological point of view, from the yield point of view, but also from the genetic point of view. And then we have today an extremely important contribution from the beneficial microorganisms. So we know that um, the different performances of the plants can be linked to, to specific traits, physiological characters or genetic mechanisms. And then we can develop new materials that receive beneficial contribution from microorganisms. For example, the arbuscular mycorrhizal fungi, AMF, and also the plant growth 
promoting rhizobacteria. So the bacteria that are living in the rhizosphere, very close to the root of the plants. And you, you can see difference of differences in the same variety among the different treatments, plants with and plants without the beneficial microorganisms. We can also act to fine tune to the fine tuning of the growth cycle to the length of the growth cycle of the plant so we can tailor the crop growth and the development in the field to do this we can enlong or shorten the vegetative and the reproductive phase to develop new more adapted varieties and then as i said you can link this variability that is a phenotypical variability some something that you can recognize something that you can see in the plant in the field you can link this with genetic variability the dna variation because tomato was sequenced the genome of tomato was sequenced some years ago and then you can use thousands and thousands of dna markers to find this marker traits association. So you can find the genes that are responsible for the trade variation. So this is the, the view that we have for the, for the future. So we have relatively little time until now to 2030 or 2050. So we have to move forward very fast, very quick, and how can we manage this incredibly powerful interaction between the environment, the genotypes, and the management? For example, we can start also to manage the soil fertility that is a biological fertility. We will have also some examples of this. So I'm moving to the end. So the knowledge transfer in agriculture is, is very important. Because sustainability in agriculture is a complex and dynamic concept. Uh, let's say that all types of farming contribute to achieving different sustainability goals and objectives. And objective. So, for example, it is very important to move forward fast, very fast in this scenario to put in place multi-environmental uh, trials, for example, that can help to speed up this uh, adaptation. And these multi-environmental trials can be combined with the modeling of crops. And the demo farms could play a, a strategic role in this because they are public-private partnerships and they are fundamental for this knowledge transfer from the academia to the productive sector. And that's why this PIC21 could be seen as a plant that, is, that has been sown in the ground. And we we'll see some example of these small plants that are growing. So you, you have seen from Marco Foschini, for example, the six demo farms of our region. So they, they could be strategic to achieve this goal. So thank you for your attention and we can move to then forward to the next presentation. So the next speaker will be Domenico Ronga. Domenico Ronga is professor at the University of Salerno that is in the south, that is the, that is the center of the, the other processing tomato, uh, let's say, cluster, let's say, major consortium in Italy, major region in Italy. So, Domenico, the mic is yours. Thank you, Enrico. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thank you to Granada to give me this opportunity. So I am Domenico Ronga, I am a professor in agronomy and production of Batus crop at the University of uh, uh, Salerno in the southern Italy. And uh, today, uh, in collaboration with uh, Federbio Servizio uh, and uh, um, Federbio Servizi and with the Steward, 
uh, we will present uh, we present you some interesting uh, uh, results uh, about the agronomic innovation of processing tomato uh, especially cultivated in organic farming system and please next slide please and uh, in the um, first case studies uh, regarding the use of uh, innovative uh, biodegradable matching films uh, provided by uh, two important companies the first one is the Novamont and the second one is the, the BASF and both companies are working um, on these materials so on the uh, biodegradable matching films to increase the percentage of the maple material inside these films. And we are collaborating with the Bio Servizio Stuart Bas Phenomenon using this material on the production of the processing tomato, especially cultivated in organic uh, farming system, because as we know, um, the management of the weeds is uh, a very critical point in the cultivation of the organic farming, but also to uh, overcome some of the critical uh, issues related to the climate change, uh, in particular about the uh, reduction uh, of the volume of irrigation water. And uh, as we know, tomato is one of the most important brushes crop that requires a lot of uh, um, amount of water irrigation to achieve a, a very uh, good, interesting yield and quality. And the uh, experiment started the last years in the steward farms in Parma, and uh, now uh, we are in the second year of uh, the project. The second slide, please. And uh, here we can see the first results uh, obtained the last years, and in particular using the, uh, both the matching films we uh, recorded an early development of uh, the matched plants compared to a matched plants. And also on matched plants, we uh, recorded more flowers and uh, fruits uh, per plant and uh, obviously a better with the management. Also, we recorded other interesting uh, parameters about the uh, photosynthetic activity of the plants, also other physiological parameters as well as uh, agronomic ones, and all the weather conditions. And regarding the physiological aspect, aspects, uh, we uh, recorded a better uh, photosynthetic activities of the leaves of the plants uh, um, matched with the, both the films. And finally, uh, we analyze also the cost of these uh, uh, techniques. And uh, using uh, uh, these films, uh, uh, general, the cost uh, is uh, uh, economically and uh, s um, very sustainable because uh, we can obtain an increase in the yield of the plants and also on the quality of the fruits. And uh, in Italy, and in particular in Northern Italy, uh, the production is paid on yield and quality of the tomato. And also, after immediately the harvest, uh, we uh, recorded also interesting parameter on the soil, just to have an idea of the impact of these biodegradable films uh, on the uh, quality of the soils. And uh, we um, notice an increase of the total mesophilic aerobic bacteria and clostridia as well, we, uh, while um, a, re a reduction of the total mold uh, in the soil was uh, recorded. The next, please. And uh, another uh, case study uh, regards the effects of innovative bio fertilizer on the yield of uh, uh, processing tomato, cultivating also in organic farming system in, or in northern Italy. Uh, this uh, experiment uh, was conducted for uh, several years in collaboration with the University of Modena and Reggio Emilia and in collaboration also with the uh, Chief Consorzio Italiano Biogas um, and uh, several uh, farms in the Emilia uh, region. So uh, please, the next slide, please. And in particular, uh, we worked on the valorization of the digestate that is a byproduct coming from the anaerobic digestion uh, 
uh, anaerobic digestion and we have uh, uh, a lot of this biogas plant and a byproduct of the of this process uh, is the digestive uh, we can have uh, two types of the digestate, uh, one so, uh, characterized by solid fraction of digestate, another one by the liquid fraction. And in uh, particular, we uh, work at on the solid phase of the digestate. And we use this uh, matrix to obtain uh, different biofertilizers. The first one, we obtained a pelletic solid digestate, and uh, the second one, we obtained a granular fertilizers. And both of these fertilizers were tested uh, on uh, processing tomato in uh, the organic cultivation. And both of these uh, fertilizers are allowed uh, for the organic cropping systems. And uh, in addition, uh, we uh, use also the solid digestate to obtain a compost tea that is a, a sort of the fermentation. And we put this uh, uh, solid digestate in the water and after we obtain this uh, extract. And this uh, uh, compost tea was used as a biostimulant on the cultivation of our plants. And in this project, we also tested the effect of the biochar and the uh, silicon on uh, the plants. So, uh, so uh, pelleted solid digestate, granula uh, granular uh, fertilizer obtained from solid digestate biochar uh, were applied uh, as uh, fertilizer uh, uh, into soil, while uh, compost tea obtained from uh, uh, solid digestate and silicon were uh, used as a foliar spray application. The next one, please. And the experiment, uh, as I said before, uh, were carried out for uh, uh, several years in the uh, Emilia-Romagna region, in particular in Parma and uh, Reggio Emilia. The next slide, please. And here uh, I, I report to you the main results of these experiments. In uh, particular, uh, biofertilizers, in general, biofertilizers increase the number of flower clusters and the spot index value. Spot index value is an interesting uh, value used to monitor the physiological status of the plants that give us an idea of the uh, activity of the chlorophyll inside the plants and an uptake of the nitrogen inside the plants. And uh, using biochar, we obtained an uh, increment of the fruit average weight and the harvest index, and also of, of the another important parameter that is the bricks ton per hectares. Biochar, using biochar, pelleted digestate and uh, compost tea plus uh, silicon, um, this product could be used in the organic cropping system, reducing the, actua the actual gap versus the conventional um, systems. Because as we know, uh, in uh, organic cropping system, in particular cultivating tomato, actually uh, we uh, have uh, a gap that range between 20% to uh, 50 percent and using compost tea obtained from composted digestate we reduce also uh, the number of fruit uh, affected by blossom and rot that is uh, an important uh, physiopathy in the cultivation of the uh, tomato and uh, finally this synergic effect of biofertilizer assessed in this world could be should tested in, a future, in a future field experiments and also on other crops, uh, for example, as said Enrico, uh, on maids and uh, on winter cereals, just to close uh, the, um, just to test this product on other crops. The next, please. And uh, uh, here I can conclude uh, our uh, uh, activities just in briefly to uh, give uh, the opportunity to the for the discussion. And again, thank you uh, for your uh, opportunity, for your attention. And uh, I am here for any other uh, comments, uh, qu uh, question or uh, dubs. Thank you very much, Domenico. I think that the contribution that agronomy will give to the improvement of the processing tomato production when cultivated in organic farming system is, is very important because we have to remind the, the people who was, was attending the, the meeting that the yield gap between the organic farming system and the conventional cropping system is around 40, 50 percent, so uh, less in the organic compared to the conventional. Okay. Let's move now to the third speaker, 
today that will be the Professor Simone Orlandini from the University of Florence. And uh, um, as we have seen, uh, the innovation in agriculture could be based on novel genotypes and also in improved management techniques. And I think that a major contribution is also expected from the so-called precision and digital farming. So I think we will see now a nice case study presented by Simone Orlandini. The Thank you, Enrico. I can uh, use my presentation because I changed a little bit. Yes, of course. Okay. Yes. Okay. So, uh, thanks a lot, Enrico. Thanks for all the audience, and thanks you, you for inviting me to, to present my study on this very interesting, uh, very interesting uh, conference. And uh, I change a little bit the, the the crop of my that I will address because uh, I will, will present my study on cereal. But uh, I will try to point out the importance of bio-based products and also the possibility of integrating uh, bio-based products with new technologies uh, in order to address the, uh, the goal of precision agriculture. And as also uh, previous speakers pointed out, uh, digestate and compost are very important. And uh, in Italy, we have uh, a very strong production of uh, biogas, especially in, uh, uh, we have more or less 2,000 biogas plants, especially in our part of uh, uh, Italy. And with Germany and UK, uh, Italy is one of the most important producers at the EU level. And we can say it at the global level because probably also only China has uh, a higher number of plants. And also, as concerning composting plants, we have a lower number, but we have to say that uh, these are uh, biggest plants that uh, include, uh, they collect a large amount of uh, vegetables or also, in, in any case, organic residual. And the, so that the, the final production is more or less 4, 4 million tons of compost while for biogas plants uh, more or less also a single farm can have its own plants and as concerning uh, digestate we have to say that is um, the results as i told you of biogas production process and all, we have also other uh, products like co2 and also sulfur sediments and uh, is uh, produced from organic substrates, uh, animal and vegetable material. And um, we, as also Professor Gronga told you, uh, liquid fraction and solid fraction are two uh, more or less different uh, part of digestate. Uh, liquid fraction usually is considered as a fertilizer because it has a higher amount of uh, nitrogen and also nitrogen is available for plants and uh, as concerning the distribution is important that uh, we use injection system in order to avoid the surface spreading and also to reduce the amount of uh, greenhouse gases emission. The solid fraction has a lower uh, content of uh, mineral nutrients so it has uh, a more or less um, an effect of amendment and it's very important also for plant nursery substrate uh, because also the high water retention capacity and also the low weed content. And uh, the criticism are, um, as I told you, greenhouse gas emission, uh, volatilization and le leaching uh, risk. Uh, also sometimes uh, high content of uh, salt, so soil pollution, odors and uh, 
low nitrogen content, and for salt fraction, management cost, and low fertilization potential. And another important uh, point, um, element that we have to point out is that we need the frequent analysis on anaerobic digestion plants. So this is, it requires attention in order to monitor the uh, process. Compost is the final product of humification process of organic material, uh, pruning, uh, manure, food waste, waste uh, animal residues, and uh, it has a very good nutrient balance, uh, also depending on the material that we use for the production of compost, and also we need some water to maintain the uh, microbiotic activity. The use of uh, compost is mainly as an amendment. Um, it, it is, uh, of course, uh, as the effect of improving uh, and increasing soil organic matter uh, can be very useful. Very interesting also the uh, mixing with other uh, products like soil, vermiculite, and sand. And there are, in this case, also very strong re regulation about its use. The criticism um, are mainly due to the um, process of collecting the uh, organic residuals. So sometimes there are, are plastic inside that are uh, difficult to, to be separated from the organic part. Sometimes there is, there is a, a strong content of salt, especially when compost is produced from uh, uh, domestic uh, biomasses, uh, domestic residuals, uh, of course, odors and noise pollution. Um, the quality is uh, uh, not homogeneous because strongly affected by the characteristic of the uh, element that you use for the production and sometimes also with the development uh, is, is facilitated. And in this slide, you can see uh, the effect of, uh, uh, of salt. You can see the relevant uh, salt content in the in corn. Uh, so now we use these uh, two bio-based products for um, trying to test different uh, experiments to, uh, for the fertilization, for, especially for nitrogen fertilization. And to see the impact on uh, greenhouse gas emission and also on the production and also on the organic uh, soil organic matter. And uh, in this case, we use the uh, fertilization, we use liquid fractional digestate on black cabbage and uh, the total carbon footprint assessment pointed out a very strong reduction of uh, greenhouse gas emission in the in the use of digestive uh, including also of course all the process of uh, uh, mineral uh, nitrogen fertilization production in uh, in farm and uh, we have uh, about uh, the 60 percent less less uh, greenhouse gases emission without uh, any impact on the final production uh, but it's uh, of course very important now the possibility of uh, developing uh, uh, precision agriculture uh, by integrating uh, different technologies like remote sensing, modeling, uh, and uh, um, geographical information system. In this uh, slide, you can see uh, uh, some maps of, uh, uh, that we elaborated during spring in uh, a, a field of uh, Valdorcia region in Tuscany, and uh, we calculate the different vegetation indices, uh, and uh, you can see the corresponding maps. And uh, the maps on the bottom of the slide is the prescription map where uh, each uh, position of the uh, field is, in, is um, characterized by a different color representing uh, the amount of nitrogen that is to be uh, distributed. And in this case, we um, 
find out that uh, the, the integration of remote sensing uh, with the, um, the possibility of using the data for calculating different uh, irritation indices in the field uh, produced a, um, an, in, an increased efficiency of nitrogen use and particularly nitrogen nutrition index approach determined a lower rate, a lower nitrogen rate without impacting yield. It's also with economic and environmental benefit. We try to do the same in, uh, in specific uh, plots in a lysimeter in the, in the field uh, by using uh, the uh, green seeker instruments and in barley. And also in this case, uh, we, using the data collected by green seeker uh, allowed to, to reduce nitro, to increase nitrogen use efficiency, uh, globally determining also reduction of uh, greenhouse gas emission without impact on the productivity. And so what is uh, what we do at the, the end of this, uh, of this study was also to integrate uh, uh, precision farming, uh, um, precision agriculture method tools uh, with the use of this bio-based product, in particular digestate. And you can see this experiment on, on corn. We use specific chambers to measure greenhouse gas emission that you see in the, in the slide. And uh, also we use, uh, a, in this case, also green seeker to measure the amount of, uh, to, to collect some uh, remote sensing data in order to calculate uh, NDVI and also other indices. And we use this data to um, de determine the amount of, uh, um, to plan the uh, fertilization and particularly we, tested also the use of digest aid. And uh, in this experiment, but also these uh, data are confirmed by also other experiments performed in the field, we didn't have an impact on production, but uh, we have uh, several advantages, uh, uh, such as the increase of organic matter in the soil, uh, the reduction of greenhouse gas emission, and also the reduction of cost. So we have to say that uh, I think that this will be the, the, the real future of, uh, of our agriculture where we can combine all the um, product, uh, informatic, uh, technological product, and also bio-based product in order to have uh, a more sustainable agriculture. And finally, uh, also my, the previous, uh, the first speaker, uh, to Enrico told uh, something about the importance of demo farm and also I have to, to point out uh, that uh, in Toscany we have a, a very, very useful and very efficient uh, demo farm that also you will see something in the, in the next section. And uh, we didn't uh, do, uh, I can't show you some results concerning bio-based product, but uh, we have uh, the possibility of uh, testing uh, very uh, in, uh, in the field that you can see in the top uh, slide, um, the, the behavior uh, of different uh, winter wheat varieties, uh, comparing also old, ancient uh, and new varieties. And we tested the, the uh, physiological and also productive characteristics of uh, these varieties and also we uh, measure some um, remote sensing uh, parameters uh, so that we have a possibility of uh, calibrating this data on these uh, old varieties uh, and it will be very important in order to find uh, to collect data for the uh, support of, uh, um, of the planning of the cultivation method that is very important for these old varieties because they need the special attention to have uh, to give uh, good production uh, in, with the, the new technologies so thanks a lot for your attention and uh, i give the floor to, to enrico thanks thank you simone i think it, it was a striking example of the 
possibility to increase the sustainability of the cropping systems, uh, combining together the applied research and the basic research uh, in the field. And then uh, I see that it is 3.12 p.m. Uh, we have some more time and um, if Celia agree with me, uh, I will have the pleasure of involving now uh, Dr. Guido Bezzi from the Italian uh, Consortium of Biogas uh, as an additional guest speaker of this first uh, session because the topic of his presentation is uh, very fitting in this part. So Guido, you can start your presentation. The mic is yours. Thank you, Enrico. <coughs> Thank you, Enrico. Good afternoon, everyone. It's a pleasure for me. Thank you for, for the, the invitation. And it's a pleasure for me to uh, present you uh, our experience uh, in uh, efficiency use of digested as a bio fertilizer. Next, please. About the uh, CAB, Italian Biogas Association, I'm the head of uh, agronomy area of the Italian Biogas Association. It's the Italian Association of uh, Farm that uh, manage biogas plant and also uh, industry uh, and, uh, and uh, society and uh, that uh, have uh, a role uh, in, uh, in uh, the biogas chain, uh, Italian biogas chain, uh, uh, production chain. Uh, next, please. So our experience, uh, our experience, it's based on biogas that right. It's our approach. It's a, a bottom-up approach that we start. We start to study directly from uh, uh, from farm. So I mean, uh, how farm uh, manage the the anaerobic uh, digester and how farm uh, integrated the anaerobic, the, the anaerobic digester system in our in in their uh, productive system and. Um, the most important part of, of this, uh, this system, it's typical Italian system, is the digested, the use of digested, because the digested, the digested is the, the factor that close our carbon cycle, cycle in, uh, in, in our farm. And when the aerobic digester is well uh, integrated in a farm, it's uh, a, a, really, um, a, a really value for, for, uh, for, for the farm. Uh, there is three main pillars that the farm uh, apply in uh, in the biogas direct approach. It's, uh, of course, the optimized use of digested as uh, a biofertilizer uh, with uh, uh, reduction of tillage, so uh, the apply of the conservation tillage practices, and uh, also the use of the sequential cropping, because in some areas of Italy we can uh, produce one in the same year, one crop for the food or feed, or, and uh, one crop for, uh, for biomass. Together, those, th uh, those three pillars are the, the, the three main pillars uh, of the biogas and right uh, approach. Next, please. OK, uh, so uh, we, we start from the biogas and right approach. Uh, in order to um, arrive to define biogas as a facilitator of uh, uh, agroecological conversion of the agriculture, because our farm that we study, that we that we follow, um, are applying innovation in every uh, in every topic of their their chain, their productive productive chain, uh, and together all those innovation. Uh, are uh, can uh, can um, uh, can allow the farm to be uh, more agroecological to be more sustainable. Next, please. With the use of digestate, we we can turn the classical uh, fertilization NPK fertilization to the CNPK fertilization. We call CNPK fertilization because with the digestate we can. Uh, uh, we can fertilize NPK 
but also we can return uh, organic carbon to the soil in order to uh, maintain and uh, maintain and improve fertility of the soil. So the idea is, uh, if we can improve the use soil efficiency with the double crop cultivation when it's possible, we have more uh, more photosynthesis, more roots, more uh, digested into the soil. So we can have more stable carbon into the soil and. Our uh, farm, we can, uh, our farm can uh, can become uh, uh, can can storage carbon into the soil. Next, please. It's required an improved mechanization because we 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 have to uh, start to improve the mechanization to have uh, to, to to in in order to be more efficient in our work. More efficient uh, in in uh, in the in the tillens and more efficient in the use of digested because the digested is a value for our farm, and uh, we are working in this with the biogas 4.0 project. It's uh, an, a rural development program. Next, please. It's for the uh, for, for the infield crop uh, for the herbaceous crop. Uh, we are start uh, to apply a full 4.0 agriculture system with the use of the digested as a fertilizer. When we apply the four, four biogas 4.0 4 system, <clears throat> uh, we apply on, only digested uh, as a fertilizer. We apply reduced tillage and uh, also, as you see, uh, strict tillage. And we apply also, uh, we, we try to set up the, the variable ratio uh, in, in, the, in the digest that you use in order to be more as efficient as possible, in order to use more efficiently uh, the digest data, in order to, 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 um, uh, to substitute the, 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 uh, the chemical fertilizer in our field. You can see. Uh, in, in the photo, the difference is in, in the same field, in, in, in the trial field. And uh, we are at the first, so now in field we have the second year, but uh, the first data that we collect uh, are, uh, uh, are interesting because we are able, we are not uh, uh, setting up uh, the, the, the better system now, we have some problem to, uh, to solve, but we are now uh, already um, able to produce uh, uh, like the traditional way. Next, please. Another, uh, another experience, it's another uh, uh, rural development program. It's uh, Digestato uh, 100%. It's the setting up of this, the, the first irrigation with liquid fraction of, of uh, digestate in, uh, in field. It requires uh, um, uh, filtering system of the, the liquid fraction of digestate, but we can uh, use the digestate also in um, du during the, 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 the growing the plant, and we can uh, um, uh, apport uh, nitrogen and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and element when uh, um, the plant uh, when the plant need this uh, this element, and also in this case uh, compared to the traditional. Uh, the, the, the traditional approach, we have uh, interesting result because we are able to uh, produce more than the traditional uh, the traditional approach uh, without use uh, or with less use of water and um, and also fertilizer or because we can recycle uh, fertilizer and water with digestate. Next, please. At the end, uh, for fruits and wine agar, we have. Uh, another experience with the BOVV project. It's um, a project that uh, we, we produce uh, some an innovative organic fertilizer based on digestate with the uh, University of Modena and Reggio Emilia with, uh, uh, with uh, Domenico. And, um, and we produce uh, uh, pelletized uh, pellet from a solid fraction of uh, uh, of, of the, the digestate and uh, an experimental organ mineral uh, fertilizer based on digestate. And um, 
we we try to uh, to use those first to, those uh, for, uh, experimental fertilizer in uh, in winegar, but uh, it's possible also in in fruits etc. And we uh, uh, we have uh, uh, some results with digested than uh, normal fertilizers. Uh, next, please. So we are we, we have also in, uh, at the end we have also um, estimate uh, when the, the 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 biogas plant is well integrated in 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 the farm system and the farm is able to. Uh, apply an, uh, an integrated approach and uh, an innovative approach. Uh, what is the, um, the, 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 the results, uh, the, the, the environmental results uh, from uh, um, agriculture in, 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 in with this uh, agroecological approach? And um, we call this farming for future. And uh, we estimate that uh, the agriculture can reduce their uh, their uh, emissions uh, more than 30 percent uh, than the, the emission that we that we have and agriculture will be also um, uh, strategic for the, uh, the the carbon storage in soil next please i thank you so much and finish thank you guido thank you very much so Celia, as you as you see, you you were quite afraid if we were in time or not. I think we are perfectly in time. What do you think? <laughs> yes, I think we we're perfectly on time. And I see in the chat there's uh, quite some discussions going on. So that that's great. Yeah. Um, yes. <laughs> so perhaps unless there are any open questions, I can I cannot read the whole thing, but. Um, I see that some of you have already answered. For example, Arnaldo Docena had a question and that's been answered. Perhaps, Enrico, before we close this first conference, you could um, make some sort of a wrap up. Um, we saw some very specific uh, scientific innovations here. Uh, Arnaldo was asking, was saying, well, we're already using some of these in the region. And you made the clear point that yes, perhaps, but a lot of farmers are not there, absolutely. So. What could we learn from today? How we make sure that these innovations actually reach the, 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 the users? Yes, prob probably the audience from abroad um, doesn't have um, a good knowledge about the, the agricultural sector in Italy. Uh, because, you know, our typical farm is quite small compared to the other countries. So the agricultural system in, in, in our country is quite complex because we have different systems that are um, living together side by side sometimes so we have the organic farming system the integrated agricultural systems that is quite good in my point of view then we have the conventional uh, production system that also has strong rules about pollutants about uh, the the management of uh, the the, the farm as a whole so the system is quite complex and put innovation inside a complex system is a big challenge for everyone so the best way is to take some very effective examples like for example the the processing tomato value chain in which the primary sector is strongly connected with the industrial transformation sector so they can work together it is always some kind of fighting between the two point of views because the farmers as you know have a different per perspective from the industrial sector but if if they learn to stay together to work together for a common objective and in this the definition the framework of this common objective is a responsibility of the agricultural policies at all levels, at the EU level, at the national level, at the regional level. If the policies are clear, the entire system can bring together and fight to overcome this, uh, this problem. This is, that's my opinion. If the colleagues can want, want to add something, they are very welcome. 
perhaps a comment from Domenico Ronga or Orlandini, don't, don't, don't hesitate. We still have a couple of minutes to discuss this really rich argument. <laughs> no, I, I agree because uh, of course we, we can, there are some comments that uh, the, these innovations are already applied, but uh, the problem is that uh, they are applied only in very specific uh, and uh, top uh, uh, level uh, context, but the, the majority of the, of the farms uh, don't know or they don't uh, uh, they don't have enough time, knowledge, uh, everything to, to do this, especially for instance for cereal, uh, uh, but I don't know for tomato because I don't work about this and probably tomato, as Enrico told uh, before, there is a strong link with the industry for cereal is uh, this link is not so strong and uh, uh, in some cases uh, very difficult to, to to spread the innovation but we have to, to work on this uh, uh, presenting uh, case studies uh, using the demo farm uh, we must work on this uh, trying to to involve also the uh, the farm organizations, uh, consortiums, and, and so on, so that uh, the, the innovation will become the, the ordinary thing. But uh, it's, it's not uh, easy, at, 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 at least in Toscany, but I think in the Italian context. Absolutely. Absolutely, absolutely because the sustainability, we, we must always remember that has the three main aspects of the economic sustainability first of all because agriculture is not charity but the economic sustainability the environmental sustainability i think that the farmers the agricultural sector increased in the in this concept in this uh, awareness awareness and then the ethical sustainability Thanks God, we are in a, in a, in a system, production system that has uh, an higher ethical sustainability compared to other parts of the world. So we are talking about the European agriculture, so the advanced agriculture. We must be the, the innovators, not just for our countries, but also for the developing countries, I think. Thank you. I think this provides a really good tr transition to the next uh, part of the afternoon, uh, especially what you said, Simone Arlandini, on the uh, collaboration between the primary sector and the industry. Uh, in the second part of this afternoon, we will uh, follow with uh, field visits. Uh, if we had been in a normal year, of course, we would be in, uh, in a room all together and we would take a bus now and take you to see these places for yourself. We're not able to do that, so we have done some videos so that you can actually get very close to what these people do. And one of the, the, the first video that you will see will be on this exact example that you mentioned, Simone Orlandini, this uh, collaboration between the, um, in the tomato processing value chain between the primary sector and the uh, transformators. So we will have a, a look at this collaboration, at this partnership that can actually take place with a really great example of the uh, experimental station um, in, in Italy. And then we will go to another really good example, uh, perhaps in a, in a value chain where this collaboration is not so evident between primary uh, sector and, and, and industry, it's in the, the wine production sector. So we will go to Cesa Farm in, in Tuscany and we will visit the, 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 the farm together and we will see that uh, they have also put together this great site where the, the two worlds can work together, um, the farmers on the one side and then the, the actual uh, well, uh, producers of wine and then the, the, uh, the whole value chain would work together or be able to, to collaborate on this, on this side. So after a short break, uh, we're nearly uh, on time, so that's fantastic. Uh, after a very short break, five minutes, please don't uh, change the meeting rooms, just stay here and perhaps grab a coffee or something. Um, but in five minutes, we will uh, take you on that first uh, field visit and uh, hopefully you will still be there <laughs> when we come back. Thanks very much, Enrico Francia, for having moderated. You're still uh, with us for the second part of the afternoon.
Thank you, Simone. Thank you, Domenico. Thank you, Guido, for the great presentations. Of course, they, the, the, the recordings will be available, so people who are not able to attend today will be able to review uh, your videos later on. Thanks again for your contributions, and I hope you will be able to meet with some of our participants through B2Bs. Uh, yes, it was my pleasure. So, Thank you. Thank you, Celia. Thanks for yeah. inviting. Thanks a lot. No yeah, problem at all. Thank you for your thank opportunity. You. <clears throat> okay. And we will be back in five minutes, everyone. Yes, 338, 39. <laughs> 338, exactly.